welcome back to part two of Password Cracking 101 plus one. Okay, for those of you who joined us in the last video, um, we finished off on an online password cracking exercise where we introduced Hydra um, and attacked an example MySQL database that is running uh, on your Kali OVAs that you've all hopefully downloaded. For those of you that haven't, please do have a look on our site. We provided an OVA that can be downloaded and imported into VirtualBox, um, which provides uh, a minimal Kali install with default Kali credentials, uh, but it, also, it is pre-populated with all of the word lists, resources, questions and answers and things that we are going to be looking at in this course. So let's move on to dictionary attacks. From here onwards, for all of the remaining videos in this training course, we're going to be focusing on offline attacks. A dictionary attack is the most common, and anyone who's done password cracking before is likely to have conducted a dictionary attack, whether they've realized it or not. The most common method involves downloading a dictionary um, or a word list. The terms are interchangeable. You'll probably hear me use both. <laughs> um, and giving it to uh, an attack tool to generate hashes for us. Now, we're going to be focusing on Hashcat, as I've probably said a few times, and we'll continue to say. Um, and in the example shown at the bottom, we could take a word list which contains a number of password candidates, and we would say to Hashcat, we are going to crack MD5 or NTLM or SHA1 or whatever hashing algorithm we are looking at attacking. Hashcat would then take our word list, take each candidate therein, compute the respective hash of that candidate, and then compare it to our compromised or stolen hash. If it's a match, Winner, winner, we know the clear text. If not, repeat and rinse. till so we eventually get the password, or quite often not, as the case may be. The links here are some resources where you can download word lists. Weak Pass is a very well-known, um, popular one. It has a ton of different word lists, and actually hash lists as well, um, that you can download and use. They do vary, of course, in quality and performance. A very popular one is one called rockyou.txt, which has been around um, for years now, 2007 or 8, I think. A uh, smallish word list, about 130 megs in size, and contains about 14.5 million passwords. Now, whilst you might think that sounds like a lot, um, when we get onto the speeds at which we can attack these hashes, you'll quickly see uh, how fast we can actually crunch these numbers and burn through those guesses. So it's not actually as big as you think. Okay, I've said hashcat enough now. We should probably introduce it. Um, it's a fantastic tool, cross-platform, supports over 300 hash types and is increasing, you know, uh, it seems like every other day. It's got a really great team of developers behind it. They're really um, very knowledgeable and approachable people. Um, so they're definitely, it's definitely the tool I use for, for nearly everything I do. It really leverages GPU support. So if you've got a good GPU in your in your system, uh, especially if you run an NVIDIA GPU, so like a, a gaming rig, for example, is fantastically positioned to crack hashes at absolutely phenomenal speeds. If you want to eke out every bit of performance from your rig, it's always recommended you compile Kali from source. Um, you can, of course, use pre-compiled binaries, or you could look to use the inbuilt hashcat that comes with uh, Kali. But generally, the best way to do it is to compile from source. Also, you should never really crack on a VM because the virtualized hardware doesn't help you at all. So always try to crack on a, on a host operating system with a GPU that's accessible to it to get the to get the best bang for your buck. I say bang for your buck. Hashcat's free, of course, but still. How do we need to? How do we crack with Hashcat then? So first of all, let's have a look at the the help because Hashcat dash help uh, shows us lots and lots of things. We're in our Kali VM here, in our Hashcat folder. So I'm going to run Hashcat dash dash help, and we can see there's tons of stuff here. We're not gonna need all of this now. We are gonna build on some of it. We can see the different hardware types, Hashcat supports and hash sets and things, and we're gonna look at some of these later. But when we get to the bottom of this list here, you can see all of the modes Hashcat supports, the hashing algorithms Hashcat supports, I should say, and the mode, which is the number to the left of it. And we can see we've got hundreds and hundreds of things here. Everything from cryptocurrency to disk encryption to Microsoft Office, uh, you name it. Most things you're going to come across here, Hashcat does have support for. And as we scroll all the way up to the top, we can see you know, MD5 is mode zero, a very common one we might be looking at. So there's loads of stuff here. Um, and Hashcat running the help will often f tell, you to, uh, tell you what you need to know. You could then uh, sort of pipe that to grep if you know the hashing algorithm you're attacking, and, and we really should do most of the time. For example, NTLM, we could grep that and find 
the uh, NTLM is hashcap mode 100, NTLM being a Windows logon hash that we'll, that we'll look at later. Basic syntax for hashcat, call hashcat, specify the mode of the hash with dash m as we've just identified, and then we need to give it the attack type. Now the attack mode in this case is mode 0, which is a straight attack mode. Straight is interchangeable with, with dictionary, it means the same thing. And it's also the default attack type in hashcat, so if you omit dash a0 and leave it out, it will expect a dictionary and work just fine. We're going to include it here though for completeness. Next is the hash. Now if you have a hash like MD5 or NTLM that just uses um, alphanumeric characters or hex characters, you can pass that in for a single hash on the command line on standard in. If you're using a hash, for example, like bcrypt or something else that uses special characters, that would need to be quoted to avoid it breaking the terminal. Uh, a better way or a cleaner way of doing this for multiple hashes, though, would be to put them into a file, one per line, and then you can put all of the special characters in, um, and loading it from a file is absolutely fine. Just be careful on standard in. Lastly, your word list. This is all Hashcat needs for a very high level. This is kind of the minimum required to attack a hash using Hashcat. It needs to know the mode you're attacking, the attack mode, of course it needs to know the hashes, and the word list. Now on the um, uh, attack mode, sorry, on the hash mode front, Hashcat in more modern versions does, su does support hash auto detection. However, it's encouraged not to use that. If you know the hash, then specify it, because you can encounter you know, issues where Hashcat gets confused. For example, uh, MD5 and NTLM both have a 32 length sort of fixed string. Um, more than that, and um, other iterations of MD5. So if you tell Hashcat, crack this, and it doesn't know what it is, it'll say, hey, it could be any one of these 10 or 15 hash types and it won't proceed until you tell it. There are some hashes that are explicitly uh, sort of unique and Hashcat can detect on inputs when it sees these, but generally if you know the hash, it's always best to supply it. Just make sure you know Hashcat is only going to look at the algorithm you want it to look at. Okay, Linux passwords. So um, rather than just jump into an attack every time, we're going to be looking at a number of different uh, hashing algorithms as we progress through this training course and as such we thought it'd be a good idea just to give a very brief background on each just a slide just to introduce what we're going to be looking at uh, before we attack it in this case we're going to be looking at a Linux password now a Linux password is stored in Etsy shadow a very privileged file owned by root um, and the construction of it is shown below in our Roots in our Etsy shadow um, entries, you'll see for example we've got one here for the root user. You'll always have the username first, and then after a colon you'll have some dollar delimited fields. The first is going to be the algorithm used. Now um, I should note here that the MD5 and SHA-2 variants here we can see are not the raw MD5 and SHA-256, they are MD5 crypt. SHA-256 crypt and so on, they are much stronger and more resilient to attack than their raw variants. Uh, Bcrypt is by far um, the hardest one to crack, it is the most GPU resilient um, and even with lots of horsepower you do not get really good speeds out of this. Linux does passwords uh, a lot better than Windows in, <laughs> generally across the board uh, and if you come across a Bcrypt hash um, my heart already sinks a little bit because it means I won't be able to get really really fast speeds that we can do with many Windows hashes. The 2x is a placeholder there. There are variants of bcrypt. You could see an x, a y, a, a and I think there are some others as well. Uh, needless to say, that denotes the hashing algorithm, and we would need to know this so we can tell Hashcat what we're going to attack. Next is the salt. So a salt is a random, unique input that's typically prepended to a user's password before hashing, um, and this is great because what it does, it means that two users or many users with the same password will not generate the same hash value. Okay, so these were great because they used to defeat really old school attacks called rainbow table attacks, which aren't really used anymore at all. Uh, but it still adds a lot of resiliency to the password because it means we now need to we now have to pre-compute uh, our word list with the unique salt per user in order to generate uh, hashes that we can compare. So it does slow things down a hell of a lot. Lastly, we have of course the actual hash itself. Okay. We're going to jump into the next exercise, our first dictionary attack. Inside your Kali VMs, you'll have an exercises folder within the Hashcat folder. And inside there, we'll have, as you will see if you look inside, a number of hashes that we're going to be using in all of the upcoming videos as we progress through the training. In this case, we're looking at exercise 2, Linux hash. So, 
if I jump into our Hashcat folder here, we can see we have an exercises folder, which we're going to be looking at shortly. But let's have a look first of all at the actual hash itself to see what we're dealing with here. Exercise to Linux hash. Here is our hash value. You can see already this is much longer and certainly looks a little bit more complex than an MD5 or an NTLM. But the identifier here is $6. So this is what we could do to, this is what we want to use to uh, look at, to identify what hash mode we need. So if we want to grep, for example, $6, this would be something we could use. Oh, this is good. This is something we could use to as an identifier to see what we've got. And we can see here, dollar six is mode eighteen hundred. Okay, so mode eighteen hundred SHA five twelve ripped. So a dollar six hash it, that dollar six hash is a SHA five twelve ripped hash, and as such, we need mode eighteen hundred. So let me copy paste because there's no way I'm typing this out. Our command to see what we get. So we're going to call hashcat mode eighteen hundred. I'm going to pass this hash to the command line and as such I'm going to need to quote it because of course this hash has a number of special characters. We could put this into, into a file as well but I'm doing it on the command line. Most attacks that we're going to carry out in this training are going to be using the top100.txt that we've provided to you in our word lists folder. There's no value in having you sort of sit in front of your computer waiting hours and hours for a big dictionary to exhaust. Not only that, we're cracking on a virtual machine, virtual machine, which is like a cardinal sin when it comes to password cracking. We're not here to sit and wait to test big dictionaries. We're here to learn different attack types and techniques. So we're going to have a relatively easy password to crack in this instance. And if we run that, we can see Hashcat is going to load up. We get lots of information about what's going on. And because this is a very simple password, it's cracked instantly. You can see here it's taken zero seconds to crack. The status of Hashcat is set to crack. If this was, of course, running for minutes or hours, it, you would, of course, see a different information here. It would say it was running. And you could press the S key for status updates on your keyboard where it would tell you what it's doing, it would show you some of the candidates it's testing, it would show you how many it's recovered. In this case, it's only one out of one, but if you had a, a file with, let's say, 100 hashes in, it would say zero out of 100, and as you crack, the recovered, of course, would, would get higher and higher. The speed, very important, as we'll see as we go on. We're guessing very, very slowly here. We're on virtualized hardware, and we're cracking bcrypt, so 863 hashes a second is a is a horrific hash rate that no no pen tester or password cracker would even get out of bed for but like I said we're not here to look at the the speeds in this instance we're here to guess passwords as hashcat cracks passwords it will display the hash followed by a colon and then after the colon you will have the clear text password of what you've cracked so it's not uncommon on large hash, hash lists see many of these coming out on the screen where you can see the clear text password at the end so in this instance the password is star wars okay now that was a very high level example and as we finish that off we can see and as the answers will show these answers are like i said before already on your cali ovm uh, ova file so you can look at these in your uh, answers folder uh, and it will give you everything you need to go back and do these we identified the hash value and then we passed that hash to Hashcat with the mode we identified, top 100, and cracked that hash to get Star Wars. We're going to leave that there for this time. We're going to move on in the next video, next time to uh, extend our dictionary attacks and look to rules and other things to see how we can uh, extend our attacks even further. Thanks very much and hope to see you in the next video.